shipping, 4% credit card fees, or glamorous gold and silver infomercials, SD Bullion has the lowest prices that may save you hundreds on your next order. So before you make your next investment, do the math and join the over 15,000 new customers who have recently made the switch to SD Bullion. Why pay more? All right, well, the last topic I'd like to discuss is a little bit about the dollar collapse that you see coming. Now, you talked about in your article that most people among the common masses cannot imagine a world without the dollar. They assume it as a constant. It is not. So I guess, did you want to discuss a little bit about the collapse of the dollar and how it'll impact um, people who are unprepared? And then maybe like for those who do see it coming, in what ways do they need to prepare? Well, the main way to prepare is, is to buy gold and silver and to dump your your, your stock accounts and, and to get rid of your bank CDs uh, before they get bailed in. <laughs> Gosh, I mean, I just sent a message to my brother a couple weeks ago. He's got he's got a bank account in uh, Citibank and a bank account in J.P. Morgan. And I asked him, why'd you do that? And he said, well, they're bigger. They're, they're safer. No. No, they're the most likely to do a bail-in. Well, I don't know about all that stuff. Okay, so the bail-in is going to scare a lot of people. Now, what is it about the dollar that, that a lot of Americans don't understand? I mean residents of the United States. I talk to a number of Americans, and I, 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 I try to get an idea of their comprehension of the dollar. And I find almost no comprehension. I ask them whether they know that trade payments are made in the dollar, like with oil. And they say, well, no, I'm not surprised about oil, but I don't know about the other stuff. Trade payments are made at shipping ports around the world in the dollar. I ask them about bank reserves. I ask them, do you know what it means that the dollar has a global reserve currency status, I get the most ridiculous blank stares and empty responses. And I say, well, you know, a nation like South Korea, that's an export giant, they save in the dollar and they put it in treasure bonds and put it in their banking system. So the bank reserves are the dollar. That's the currency for reserves. Therefore, the dollar is the global currency reserve. Oh, yeah, but what about – and you get the most ridiculous responses in, not, in a sequitur, and they change the subject. I ask people, do you know that the dollar is used in commodity pricing? And they, they know about oil being priced in the dollar, but they don't know about the copper market, aluminum, iron, uh, scrap paper, scrap plastic. They don't know about the other markets, lumber, cement. The global market for commodities is priced in the dollar. They don't have any idea. Okay. They don't know that in, uh, okay, my own landlady, she said, Jim, I prefer you pay in dollars for the rent. And besides, that's what your lease has in the contract. And I said, well, why'd you do that, senora? And she said, well, because the dollar is more stable and in, in the current as a currency, but Jim, I've got a Panama bank account. That's where I put all my rent money. So at a, at a local level, at an individual level, not nations, but people are saving in the dollar, in their dollar accounts. I ask my landlady, do you know that the dollar is under a lot of pro uh, pressure right now and it, it might go away? And she said, no, I, that, that couldn't be. And I said, why could that not be? Do you know that they're printing dollars in order to cover the U.S. government debt? She said, no, no, but not surprised because the Americans do a lot of corrupt things like that. I said, okay, so Americans do corrupt things like that, but you think, think that'll just go on forever? Oh, I don't know. There'll always be a dollar, though, Jim. Oh, really? Okay. I, I don't try to convince her. Because she's in her 80s, it's not worth my time. I just like to come to, I walk out the door with a, a thought expressed. Well, they're printing money right now to cover the U.S. debt. I don't think that'll go on forever, senora. I say this all in my best spence. 
Okay, so what can Americans do? Well, it's very difficult for them to leave, unfortunately. I, I have numerous clients who say I'd love to leave and say move to Costa Rica or Panama or Chile or Argentina. I, I'd like to move to, to Singapore. I, I'd like to move to, to Spain if I could. I'd like to go to Italy somewhere, but I can't. I've got kids here, and they don't want to come with me. They're over the teens in age, and they've got their own opinions, and they don't follow any of this. There are a lot of Americans who are going to get stuck. And the other reason Americans get stuck is that they have a job. Now, I was really fortunate. I started the newsletter three years later, had some death threats from U.S. government and the Israeli security fo folks, my, our best friends, you know, to keep America safe. Um, and I decided I don't need to live in Boston or Pennsylvania. I could email my work to the host, my, my website manager. I could do interviews on Skype or telephone. I could do all my email investigation, all my website investigation. I could do that all online. I could move. Where should I move? And I thought, well, I might go to Majorca, Spain. I might go to Dublin, Ireland. I might go to Costa Rica. I don't want to go all the way down to Buenos Aires because Argentina has constant problems. And it's a long way. That's a 12-hour flight from most American U.S. US cities. So there are going to be a lot of people stuck, and uh, I feel sorry for them. I mean, what can you do? I, I've been preaching now for 12 years. This is my 12th anniversary, April. Started in April of 04. But um, th there's not a whole lot that can be done at this point. But people do need to, to think about something very serious that is not all that difficult to do. We always hear. You sell high and you buy low. But unfortunately, for 90% of U.S. investors, they'd prefer to buy something that's already high because they're really buying the past performance and the past story. Why not buy what Wall Street and the Fed have been propping up? And that's when, I'm sorry, did I say buy? Why not sell what Wall Street and, and the Fed has been propping up, and that's uh, the stocks. Sell, sell the 401k. Sell the IRA. I actually advised my, my sister six years ago, sell your IRA and, and pay the 40% tax. Buy a bunch of silver and wait around 10 years. Don't worry. All it has to do is double, and you you got your, your all your, your tax loss taken care of. And besides, it's not really a loss. You deferred your taxes before. Now you're paying them. So just get away from the whole tax situation. Anyway, this is going to get really, really messy. Um, I'd like to see more people abandon their, their bank CDs and their stock accounts. Sell what they've been propping up. Buy what they've been suppressing, which is gold and silver. I still cannot convince my father that, that gold and silver are good investments. He said, Jim, I, I wouldn't know where to buy them. And I mean, I, I don't even know what they're worth. I mean, gosh, I don't want to study this stuff. I'm, I'm in my 90s. And I, I, I trust my financial advisor who likes to put them in treasury bonds. My father's been an accidental beneficiary of QE. I told him back in 03, what are you expecting, Dad? You think the Treasury bond is going to go down toward 1% and 2%? No, I just trust my advisor here, and I wouldn't know what to do. I said, why don't you put a third of it in, into gold? Oh, I don't know. That seems pretty risky. Th this is what someone who went through the Depression is saying. This is sad. Americans don't know much about money. They don't know much about capital, and they don't know much about inflation. And as a result, unless they get rid of their paper wealth and move into gold and silver, they're going to be severely hurt. 
I think when they finally do the launch of the new dollar, I call it the Scheiss dollar, German for refuse and excrement, when the U.S. is forced to do the launch of the new dollar, I think they're going to do a simultaneous bail-in and, and intermingle the devaluation of the new dollar with the confiscation of accounts, help out the big banks, and uh, catch the Americans flat-footed who've done nothing. I mean, my, I think my brother is at risk uh, for these the two big big bank accounts that he has. And uh, I sent him a message a month ago. Client sent me a photo of a J.P. Morgan ATM. And all it said was, your funds are not available. And this is what I think is going to be coming on a, on a mass basis, Eli. Well, Jim Willie, thank you so much for uh, giving us your time today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had and where they can find you on the Internet and subscribe to your newsletter if they're interested in finding out, out more? In the next several weeks, we're likely to see a, a, a number of very high-profile pro, high stories, and they're all going to be quite important. And I think they're all going to be working toward the removal of the dollar as the global reserve currency and the forced launch of a new dollar. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of progress toward that this calendar year. That's the only big, big point to keep in mind uh, besides you know, exiting the paper wealth uh, and, and moving into tangible wealth. Okay, this is the 12th anniversary month. Uh, it's been a, a long ride, and I can foresee it's going to be quite a while longer. Um, I think we're going to run out of wars to wage, but at the same time, the, the launch of the new currencies is going to be exciting. It's going to bring a whole new uh, chapter to the hat trick letter to cover the legitimate currencies and their launch and the struggles for them and um, the recapitalization of the banks, the reindustrialization of, of many economies that are getting wrecked by the dollar and the monetary policy. It's going to be an exciting next couple of years for sure. <clears throat> okay, I've got the hat trick letter. It's found on www.goldenjackass.com. Go to the website. You can find a lot of uh, links of interviews like this. I tend to do very few interviews for hosts that do not put a link for regular followers, not necessarily paid subscribers. I like followers of my work to be able to listen to the interviews, and some of them download them and listen to them while walking at the beach or walking in the park or, or driving to and from work. And it's, it's nice to hear that. Um, okay, check the radio interview. I call them radio, but they're really online podcasts. I call them radio interviews, whatever. Check the interviews, come up to speed, or you know, increase your, your level of understanding if you already have some. Uh, but it's, it's not just for novices. It's, it's for people with some experience, and they want to know a little bit more about what's going on because they have so many unanswered questions due to complexities and corruption going on. I try to integrate complex, uh, corruption into my forecasts. Okay, on the news, on, on the, uh, the website is the hat trick letter. Uh, it, it's the main element for the, hat, for the, the website. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting tired, my voice is getting tired. Okay, goldenjackass.com is the host for the hat trick letter. Each month, there are two monthly publications. One is called the Money War Report. The Global Money War Report is about the battle to preserve the dollar's position. I call it the king dollar and its reign of terror. By the way, all those claiming that others are terrorists, those are the terrorists. The, uh, the war against terrorism is a smokescreen for the U.S. government Monopoly on heroin and cocaine. Okay, so the global money war report is out there for high-level issues. There's another one 
it, it's not just for lower level ground level issues. It's called the Golden Currency Report, but it covers a lot of demand for for gold in China and India, Hong Kong and U.S. and Canadian mints. It's a, a lot of different uh, fallout effects on the economy. I tend to cover Russia and China in the Golden Currency Report. Um, I tend to cover some of the banks and the details in the Golden Currency Report, but central banks I cover in the bigger global money war report. So the Hattrick Letter has two monthly publications. Um, up to about uh, no, I shouldn't mention number of subscribers. It, it, it's in the thousands uh, for total orders, and it's a couple thousand in, in clients. And it's a labor of love, Elijah. I enjoy it immensely. It does exhaust me at times, but I have the opportunity to, you know, recharge my jets and have some fun out there. See a couple movies. I just saw the new Captain America versus Iron Man. It was pretty well done. A lot of special effects. A little long, though. So I hope people go to the Golden Jackass website, sign up for the Hattrick Letter. Uh, it, it's, it, I have very, very few disappointed clients. It, it's fun. It's nice to see the compliments. There are always a couple fools out there who say, you don't offer anything new. Yeah, okay, did you bother to read it? <clears throat> no, there, there's always an idiot in the crowd. And some of them work their way and become subscribers and, and work their way out the door with, a, with, a, with a, a nice special kick in the ass from me. But I get a lot of compliments, Elijah. This is fun. It, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good, good usage for analytic ability and writing ability. I, I, I've never felt better used for my abilities, but I just will say one thing. I, I kind of miss uh, my statistical analysis, the heavy-duty modeling and conclusions and uh, heavy data analysis with huge data sets. I, I miss it. I, I, I miss it. I, I miss the marketing research. But what can you do? I, I moved on. I found something that's more important. This is much more important than... Uh, you know, the buy one, get one offers for a certain group of companies and finding out what kind of benefit they had. Okay, this is much more important. So, thanks for having me on. It's been interesting, and uh, I wish you well always with your, your website, Elijah. Same to you. Thank you so much for your time, Jim. Okay, bye now. This video was brought to you in part by ReluctantPreppers.com. Click here to watch Reluctant Prepper's latest interview with Bill Murphy. The secrets are being forced out into the open. Bill Murphy, co-founder of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, GATA.org, a renowned crusader for investigating, exposing, and prosecuting gold price manipulation, returns to Reluctant Preppers to give specific evidence that proves the fact that Western banks have been illegally conspiring to suppress the prices of precious metals. Murphy also weighs in on whether or not the recent move in precious metals signals a confirmed breakout in the gold and silver markets, and gives his most likely scenario for where metal prices are going in the coming year. This interview is not to be missed.